This here's a wild boar, massive in size, weighing 100 tons, chomping down on over a 100 villagers each month. Folks in the small town are scared to step out at night. One evening, a disobedient girl went biking out to the outskirts. Out of nowhere, a cow darted out of the bushes, startling her into a different direction, straight down the hill. Climbing back up was a struggle, and she got knocked out by a speeding pickup. Shockingly, the two drivers didn't help her. Instead, they tossed her down the slope. What followed was eerie. The girl seemed to be gnawed by something, and in no time, she vanished. The next day, a couple experiencing outdoor life discovered an arm holding a book. The police quickly arrived to search the scene. Upon seeing the found remains, even the seasoned officer's legs went weak. The remnants were taken to the forensic lab. An examination confirmed that the body was torn apart by a wild animal. Meanwhile, a man, eager to impress a woman, claimed he had seen a wild boar as big as an elephant, at least 6,000 pounds. The woman, skeptical, handed him a big pair, and the next moment, the man was sent flying by a wild boar and dragged away. Upon hearing this, the police fired a shot into the air and then precisely shot several rounds. The wild boar was successfully deterred, finally revealing the truth culprit behind the girl's death was this wild boar. After the incident, the former minister spent a fortune to bring in local fishing experts to catch the wild boar. Alan, unemployed for 30 years, quickly led the team into the mountains, seeing to mature the white footprints on the ground. People speculated that this wild boar must be as big as an elephant. Looks like a showdown between humans and boars is inevitable. Alan and the crew waited from day to night, until the wild boar finally came out for a stroll. At the sight, everyone immediately sprinted toward the target. Three seconds later, the wild boar walked into the trap, falling into the pit, to prevent its escape. Alan shot it dead. Afterward, Alan had an ominous feeling, unable to pinpoint what was wrong. In the morning, the wild boar was hoisted onto a trailer, attracting a crowd of villagers. The old cadre praised himself by name, declaring the hefty sum spent on the fishing expert was well worth it. However, the old hunter disagreed. Using his years of experience, he examined the boar's head, and concluded that it wasn't a man-eating boar. To prove his point, he immediately performed a dissection on the wild boar's body, finding only two large radishes in its belly. This boar wasn't a man-eater. The real man-eating boar was still up in the mountains. Come evening, the wild boar was roasted and served on the table. Just when everyone was having a good time, a powerful force was slamming against the doors and windows. A wild boar, captured by the village's fishing expert, is turned into a feast to celebrate. While the villagers revel in the joy of victory, little do they know that the wild boar's wife is preparing to adventure big companion, constantly ramming against doors and windows. The people, immersed in their revelry, remain oblivious. The dog seems to sense something, and Alan, too, realizes danger is approaching. To alert everyone, he quickly fires his gun. The crowd falls silent as the main gate is about to give way. Tables and chairs are hastily moved to barricade the entrance. The next moment, the man-eating boar crashes through the wall. In a panic, Alan pulls the trigger, firing several shots, but to no avail. The enraged man-eating boar is now furious, emitting a fierce roar that causes all lighting fixtures to explode instantly. Alan, petrified, freezes in place. The boar then launches an attack on the people. In the chaos, villagers die, and some are injured. A brave soul throws a sickle at the boar, only to be attacked in the next moment. Summoning courage, Alan fires a shot at the man-eating boar, but the bullet is deflected. It appears that this boar is truly invulnerable. Seeing that situation, Alan resigns himself to his fate, not daring to move an inch, even as his pants get wet. Surprisingly, the man-eating boar is nearsighted, completely ignoring its enemies, and casually walks away without looking back. Soon after, the police arrive at the scene, finding a scene of devastation. No one expected the true man-eating boar to be so powerful. Thinking about the lives taken by the man-eating boar, the old hunter feels a deep sense of sorrow and resolves to eradicate this beast. The next day, the old hunter finds Alan, and they vow to bring back the man-eating boar for a celebratory meal. A small group heads into the mountains, facing difficulties along the way. As night approaches, they have no choice but to stay overnight in a villa on the mountain. Unexpectedly, the owner's hospitality shocks them as a plate of life forms is served, leaving everyone stunned. The owner advises them to return home quickly, as a man-eating boar preys on people and attempting to capture it is a death wish. Ignoring the old man's advice, the group sets out again the next day. On the way, Mary discovers the man-eating boar stump, picks up a chunk with her fingers, and tastes it, finding it surprisingly fresh, concluding that the man-eating boar is nearby. The group uses high-tech devices to set traps. Before long, they find the man-eating boar's lair, and a daring few enter. Luckily, the man-eating boar isn't home. There are only a few piglets inside. Overwhelmed by motherly instincts, Mary secretly takes one piglet as a pet. Unable to capture the man-eating boar, they decide to cut off its escape route and, without hesitation, Alan sets a fire. After committing the deed, the group prepares to move out, unaware that the man-eating boar outside has sensed something unusual. 
a fiercely aggressive wild boar, glaring at the man before it, all because it had stolen its only son. In the last moment, as the Laotian father and child, who had caught the man-eating pig and burned it, exited the cave, they discovered the pig waiting outside for them. The group quickly scattered, with the man-eating pig in hot pursuit. Fortunately, there was a large sewer pipe ahead, and the group managed to escape just in time. The massive man-eating pig could only roar outside, when it returned to its lair, and found its piglets turned into roasted suckling pigs, and its husband and child roasted as well. A burning fire of revenge ignited within it. As night fell, and everyone slept, the alarm suddenly went off. Alan, armed with a gun, went out alone. However, what came running out was a sheep. A diversion, the man-eating pig ambushed Alan. He engaged in a fierce struggle with the pig, and the others rushed over upon hearing the commotion. The old hunter fired his gun, but the machine gun malfunctioned at the moment. He had to resort to his secret weapon, a red umbrella. The man-eating pig went berserk and charged, knocking several people away. It managed to get caught in a trap, but due to its rudimentary construction, it wouldn't hold the pig for long. Alan was severely injured by this point, and the group had to abandon him to escape. The man-eating pig broke free and chased after them relentlessly. Soon, they ran into an abandoned factory and managed to find a safe spot. The man-eating pig decided to head back home. At this moment, the little pig started barking incessantly. Hearing its son's cries, the man-eating pig turned around hastily. The two hurriedly climbed into an elevator for temporary safety. Mary noticed an elevator shaft on the opposite side and immediately thought of using the little pig as bait to lure the man-eating pig into the elevator. They could then use the elevator's force to crush the man-eating pig. Jack would go to attract the pig, throwing his safety helmet as a distraction. Jack did so, and due to inertia, the man-eating pig stumbled. Another round of furious chasing ensued. Finally, they managed to lure it to the elevator shaft. However, Jack tripped. The little pig fell off him, squealing. The man-eating pig, hearing its son's cries, forgot about revenge and rushed towards the elevator shaft. Jack quickly closed the elevator door, and Mary pulled down the switch. With perfect coordination, the tens of thousands of pounds of the elevator rapidly descended, successfully suppressing the man-eating pig, leaving it no room to struggle. Jack then pulled out a burning stick, lit it, and threw it over. In the end, the man-eating pig was blasted into skewers, and the town returned to tranquility.